Very Yep. Charlie, she just quit coming. Who? Mary. Church. Mary Baker? Yeah. You knew she passed away. Yeah. I said, I'm like, you know, I didn't understand why she went to old God. She just never did come back. Sure. Why? I don't know. There ain't no reason why I come to church. That is very true. I mean, you know. I mean, I, I must say, I have to learn how to love Joe. Morning, Mr. Joe. You doing all right? Yeah. Yeah. That tastes good or stuff. Yes, ma'am, that's good. 
I got a little cup of coffee in the morning. Get me started. Good morning. Is that Doc? I don't know who it is. Yes, Howdy. Good morning, girls. I think it just. That looks like Joe on the other side. Yeah, he just turned up. Good morning. Good morning. I was thinking that somebody that I was telling Bella. <laughs> well, Donna heard it. We're on no, the girl, not the youngest, he gets come up there. And, um, Donna's listening. So, probably did tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard the funeral arrangements, right? Yeah. Across the street here. Yeah. At 2 30. At 2 30, we're only doing a great job. Yeah. Monday. Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Are you doing yeah, yeah. It? Tomorrow is Monday. Yeah, uh, okay, Joe. Are you doing the services, Joe? Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm just a little slow. A little. Okay. Now, let me see if my microphone works. I think the heat's getting to everybody about getting out, though. I did some mowing yesterday. I could tell it. You get out of that heat any time. Let's say it's going to the right out of it. Go to the house to the vehicle, that ain't bad. But getting out and moving around a little bit. Yeah. Move something. Well, me yes, up the track or something, it just burns me down. Misha collapsed her stairs after a while. Remember that Sunday night, Joe Wilson? They were, uh, it was raining. He came in wet and had a garbage bag. That's several years ago. She collapsed her stairs. So I went down to Lowe's and I built her new stairs. Did you, uh, and I got it Did you get the squash and the cucumbers? Yeah, the Donna ate them. Sir? Donna ate them already. Gotta bring some more. <laughs> How about some zucchini? You want to try some of them? I love zucchini. All right, I got some bag back here. You want some more yellow squash? Yeah, very nice. Enjoy, enjoy. I got some of them for you. Very working this morning. Yeah. It's not working. There it is. Is it working now? Yeah. Okay. This one's going in and out. I don't know why. Uh, <clears throat> Wait for Joe and Kim, they're on their way. Just fighting this heat. It's just, yeah. What's wrong Welcome with Welcome to summer. Huh? What's wrong with Sam? She's been sick. How has she been sick? I sent her a call. Uh, she's been she... sick, and I think out of all that family, she's the only one with her Oh my God. So she sometimes has to do emergencies like that. Donna has a horrible, uh, Either UTI or kidney infection. I think it's kidney infection. I think she's going to head to the emergency room if we're putting. So um, be mindful of that. Of course, the Bacon family. It was kind of a shock after church Wednesday. Kim and I went over there and talked to Mary for a little while. And she seemed okay. Yeah. Then they called me Friday. That was the day Donna had a five hour dentist appointment. Um, got a couple of crowns, a couple of villains, uh, temporary crowns. I hate villains. I, I don't think anybody likes it. I don't We I have to pass. Well, I had one in Statesboro when I was growing up that he hurt me so bad. He was, I call, used to call him Killer Jackson. Dad, uh, uh, Donna had a bad experience with him since she was little. Yeah. And so she's really hated it ever since. She had kind of a fear of it. 
but our business now is very, very gentle and extremely. She likes him. I mean, nobody likes to go away. I don't like it. I don't like it either. But I, it took me several years to get over that, uh, uh, you know, painful experience. And finally, I found Dennis in Garden City that he could give a shot and we didn't feel it. Uh -huh. And then, I, then the one I found the one that lived here in Savannah for the last 40 years, uh, he was good with the media too. That's the part I hate. Yeah, I know because when the novocaine wears off, that's the only thing that hurts is where they put that needle in. I can't stand that, but and when they start working around in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your mouth, your eye, nose, yeah. and the earache. Of course, that's where all the nerves are. It's in the head. Well, my mandibular nerve is not where it, uh, it's uh, out off. I guess by hair back there when they have to go in the back back there to do something. That's where they uh, couldn't get it numb. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't know. And then I, I just read on my app, I read that part of the bit. It's called Smart News. Kind of, well, it's got headlines too. Uh, but mostly it's just odd things from. You know, the internet. Uh, well, I read that that redheaded people, when they go to the dentist, they have an extreme resistance to pain, but they also have an extreme resistance to pain medication. They have to take like three times the amount of novocaine that we do to go to the dentist. And only a few dentists understand that. They, um, they don't know. Yeah. And said, his dentist, he said, he's a redheaded kid. That his dentist said, oh, you need the redhead dose. You know, and for somehow, and I asked my boss, my principal, she's redheaded. She said, yeah, that's entirely true. I said, I never knew that before. Uh, let's see how in Idaho, there was an LGBTQ rally and there was about 25 white supremacists in a u-haul truck somebody at a motel said there's a small army getting inside a u-haul truck and these guys were dressed in riot gear had patches shin guards shields and everything uh, there was a smoke grenade and then they were going to attack the uh, the demonstration people I'm, no matter how you feel, there's ways to confront things other than that, you know. I saw that white supremacist thing about died out. Oh no, it's getting worse. It was going back to make a full circle come back again. Yeah. You get these younger me thinking. You got these younger people that stays on this computer around the in the uh smartphone they own it all the time. When they get up, 17, 18, when they get out on their own, they ain't got nothing to do. That's the reason they are betting suicide because they uh -huh. are attacking us. They're bored. They can't do nothing. Um, and there's a lot of these white supremacists, anti Semitists, a lot of these hate groups actively recruit people over the internet. Give them games to play and you know uh, music to listen to. This uh, it's it's awful what's going on to me on the internet. Now they'll tell you we need to police what's going on, on the internet. You can't do that. It's too big. Nobody it's can. Big. Big. Nobody can discuss or, to, or deal with what's going on, on the internet. It's too big, and we all use it. Yeah, we do. No matter what you think or what technology you don't want or you have, we all use it. I mean, well, it depends on what your obsession is to it, too. The thing is, though, we have to have it. Yeah, I know it. You know, you interrupted the state news, world news, just about this fellow in the truck yeah. up here. 
I, don't, I forget the name of it. Forget it. <laughs> well, we just got an Amber Alert from Noonan, Georgia today. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, a guy on Honda Civic, 2007 Honda Civic, and stuff. another small town. Yeah, I saw that. I got that Amber Alert. Yeah. And it was on television too. They interrupted yeah, the news yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah, this morning. They did. But I've never seen them do that before. Never seen them interrupt yeah, the television. Yeah, I've seen them do that once or twice before. That's kind of recent. Okay. All right. Oh, um, well, somebody's here. Oh, it's not. Hey, Don. Oh. Hey, you can see it. Well, top of your head. Uh, Andy's over there on both. All right, what we get? Charles, just a word of prayer. Sure. Pray, please. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful morning. We thank you, Lord, for the courage we have to be in your house of Christian friends and loved ones. Lord, we ask you to be with our friends and Officer, mother, be with them and may they have a better day, Lord. Lord, we ask you to be with our loved ones that's out on the road this morning. Be with him and keep him safe. Again, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be here. The homeless and hunger in our military, be with them. May they be safe this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Now, we just finished talking about, in Matthew 21, verse 12 and 13, how Jesus drove out the lion. It's a big deal. Um, now, he drove out the money changers, the people who are selling animals. And now, here's something in verse 14. Jesus just got angry. He's done all this stuff. And he said to them, it is written, my house will be called the house of prayer, but you are making a den of robbery. Now, in verse 14, and those who were blind and those who lived came to him in the temple area and he healed them. Jesus didn't leave. I never, that had never occurred to me before just now. Jesus did all this stuff in the temple, got angry, overturned everything. And nobody pushed him out. Nobody interfered with him during it. And Jesus stayed right there in the temple. And kept on, I would say, teaching. But it says here that he healed people. Yeah. So this is what has happened. Here's this individual, Jesus, who to them was an itinerant preacher. You know, rabbi going from place to place. He comes in and he overturns all these tables and money goes everywhere. And he drives out the people who are selling doves and selling lead lambs. And he just stays there. And nobody does anything. And that's odd to me. Yeah, it's kind of surprising right. they didn't try to throw him out because he did all that. And nobody, you know, he just had, not only had he damaged property, but he was, he was coming, he was cutting off profit. The Levites and the priests and things. And nobody does a thing. And in fact, he is openly healing people, and then, look at what it says in 14. And those who were blind and those who were limp came to him in the temple area, and he healed. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, and the children were shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant. So, not only did Jesus not leave, he continued to heal people. The children are there saying, there are children who are there saying, Hosanna to the Son of David, which means praise to the Son of David. And the chief priests and the scribes 
come out and hear this stuff. And they became indignant because Jesus is still there where they are. He is still there in the temple. Now, if you want to see somebody who ain't scared of nobody, that's Jesus. He's, he's not. What was it I heard Wendy back now? It was, uh, oh, I can't remember who it was. It said, it said this old boy would wade through hell to take on a grizzly bear with a switch in the woods at night. Yeah. yeah. That, like Theodore, that's, Theodore, that's bravery. The guy like Theodore Roosevelt said to Chief Police Burns when he asked him to step down, whatever it is, he was, I guess it was when he was governor of New York or something, and Burns told him no. He says, I'm not going anywhere. And Ted Cody turned around and said to him, I'm not going anywhere either. <laughs> well, that's Eddie Roosevelt was chief of police there in New York for a while. Yeah. Um, what was the other one he said? He said he wade through hell just to find a circle saw. Yeah. <laughs> Which is another one. You know, you know, he had a problem. But, you know, Jesus wasn't scared of nothing. I mean, nothing. he has just not really committed a crime. But so far as the scribes and Pharisees are concerned, he has. He's interrupted their livelihood, and then these kids are still saying, Glory and Hosanna in the highest to the Son of David. And they become indignant and said, and so they, they tell him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read from the mouths of infants and nursing babes you have prepared praise for yourself? And then he doesn't answer them on it. Then he left. He left them and went out of the city of Bethany and spent the night there. Now, they can't say, but we drove him out. They tried to. They tried to shut up his the children that were saying this. They tried to stop him from doing what he was doing, but they couldn't. So when they finally worked up the nerve to talk to him, he answers them and said, yeah, this is a fulfillment of prophecy. You should know it. After all, these chief priests and scribes, just by the very nature, they're going to know the law of Moses better than anybody, except for Jesus. You know. Because uh, he wrote it. But you know, haven't you heard? So he goes and he leaves for Bethany and he spends the night there. Bethany is where he stays when he's in Jerusalem. It's just outside the city limits. Uh, Bethany is the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Um, so he goes there. Uh, but oddly enough, and this never occurred to me before just now reading this, and I thought, wow, uh, Jesus overturns the tables, he drives out the money changers, he drives out the keepers of the animals where they were cheating people. My father, father's house was meant to be a house of prayer, you made it in a thief. And then he stays. He doesn't go anywhere. So he's actually healing people while these crooks are trying to gather up their doves and their lambs and their money. He's ignoring them now. You know, and, and nobody's doing anything. He's not made all of his children. They're not coming. They're not welcome. They're, they're not. Yeah. But he's also made it obvious that he can do what he wants and he's not leaving. And so he starts healing people there. And then the chief priests and, and the scribes come out. But I, you know, when they hear the children saying, "Was that the son of David?" They became indignant. So they asked him about that. But did you, did you notice that they didn't come out and say, "What in the world did you do over there?" You know, oh, why did you, you do that? You know, you know how much damage you caused. Come on now. Okay, I found and also found out who did it. 
But one night I saw that somebody had uh, broken a window over here. Finally found out who did it. The kid had to, Charles, you had to fix, but the mama wanted to punish him, so I made him rake leaves out here for doing it. We should do it again so I can get him to rake some more. But um, the thing is, immediately I called people on the phone. I called 911. You know, so we, if we had to, for our insurance, you know, you know, police report, all this stuff. You know, they don't do anything. Jesus has actually caused quite a great deal of property damage. And he has limited the income of the temple. And limited the services they were having to do. Yeah. And they don't come out and say, the only thing, the only thing they do say is, you can hear what these children are saying. They want him to answer. They want him to say something to incriminate himself, probably. But they they don't ever say it. Now, to me, the first thing that they should have said was, if they really believed in what they were doing, the first thing they should have said is, why did you do this? Well, you can't do that. <laughs> or, you can't do that. Or, we've been doing this for years. Yeah. You know, and nobody's ever said anything. Why, why, why would you come in and, and make a mess? They don't say anything about that. In there, my past is up to date. They have sales. Mm -hmm. You get a, a bully mm -hmm. that's running his mouth loud over the crowd. People will turn against him mm -hmm. and want to mess, mess him up. And this doesn't happen here. That's right. If you want to know, in fact, this occurs to me now. Jesus had earned their respect to a certain degree. But you know what else? He's earned their fear. <laughs> yeah. They're scared of him. And in fact, when they go to arrest him that next Thursday night, as soon as they ask him who you are, and he says, yes, I am, they immediately fall to the ground. They're scared. They're scared. They're frightened of him. Uh, this is an individual. Now, again, yes, Jesus was a baby on Mary's lap. Yes, Jesus was on a cross and being crucified. But those are not the only two things that happened in Jesus' life. I don't want to denigrate those two things. Those are important. But here was an individual who, when he walked, people respected in some cases, we're afraid of. But he fought for the authority. He did. And self confidence. It doesn't seem like anybody really wants to cross him. And in fact, as I think about it, in every situation where he is confronted, he's not really confronted in a very, I want to say the word demonstrative, in a very strong way. They ask questions. They're waiting to hear what he says. You know, when they confront him, and they mention things to him. But they never say, listen, whoever you are, you better quit this. <laughs> you know? And said, we're going to stop you from doing this. Nobody ever says that. Oh, uh, once he did you, in Bethlehem, they tried to stone him, he just walked out and missed him. No, that was in uh, Galilee, but you're right, Nazareth. And he just walked out and missed. And that was early in his ministry. I wonder how many other times that kind of thing happened when somebody tried to. It's almost like he disappeared, you know? When he cast those demons into the pigs, people in the city come out and ask him to leave. You know, but they're very nice about them. They're scared of him. And what he is. Well, they either respect him and love him, or they respect him and fear him. I mean, these guys, these chief priests, what we know about a few of them, these are bloodthirsty, violent men. They can be. They used to get in their way, having the authority and all the power. They don't want to lose it. Well, I always thought about Jesus being, uh, I mean, you know, uh, 
uh, we don't have any really the pictures of it, but a well-built individual because of his job that he had you know, growing up and everything. So he wasn't any kind of uh, man that they thought that they could run over physically probably too. And he does know a lot about how to defeat the situation. Oh yeah. Remember the one time he said, um, which is easier to say or to heal? And he just heals the guy. Take out your bed and walk. Yeah. It's easier to say, get out and walk or thy sin be forgiven. Yeah. Which is easier to say, your sins be forgiven you or get up and walk. He tells the guy to get up and walk or you don't. And nobody says anything after that. Nobody says anything here. They finally come up to him. They don't say, his children are saying, Hosanna the son of David. And they get indignant. But now they don't tell him, be nice, you're not really the son of David. You're causing trouble by saying you are. But he wasn't saying he was, they were. Well, are you causing trouble by letting him say that you are? Tell him you're not the son of David. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, tell him to stop praising. He doesn't say, them tell him anything at all. If, what, is, what do they tell him? Do you hear what these kids are saying? That's it. Yeah, their, their attention was drawn away from what he did to the children. What is odd to me is, though, they do not confront him at all. Do they? They don't confront him. They don't try to stop him. And in fact, they're there in the temple. Obviously, they're there because he's still there healing people. Where he just overturned all these money changers and all caused all the damage. Well, they probably knew he was going to be there anyway. And they were there. I mean, obviously, they were there and watched all of this happen. I mean, we're not talking about a time period in which, um, you know, you have air conditioning and closed windows and things like that. They know what's going on. I mean, well, you hear people yelling, she's beating out of there. Probably, and he then his voice rings out. My father's, my my house will be called a house of prayer because you're making it in a thief. And they let go. That's odd to me. It's kind of hard. That hard nobody, to truth, Joe. That nobody tries to stop them. And there are people there that want him dead. There are people that want him arrested. There are people there in that temple among the leaders. They want, they want him stopped. And they come out and they get indignant about what these kids are saying, but they don't say, make the kids stop. They don't talk to the children at all. Y'all hush. Yeah. I mean, that's the first thing I would do in a group of kids, doing something I didn't want to do. You know, no y'all be quiet for that. You know, they don't do that. And the only thing they can come up with is, do you hear what these children are saying? He answers it with scripture. Have you never read from the mouths of infants and nursing babes? You have prepared grace for yourself. And he walks away. They never answer. This was, Jesus was, and we all say it all the time, but Jesus was a powerful individual. Not only did people love him, but everybody respected him, and some of these people were afraid of him. He was that kind of thing. Some loved him, some hated him. But they all respected him. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they treated him like an individual with authority, power, you name it. He had authority and power. This is somebody you just don't mess with. You know? Well, they were afraid of the other half of the people, too, that if they did something to him, that they might get overrun themselves. Yeah. Something was going on with these people. They did not confront Jesus. They acted as if, and I believe they were afraid of him. He they weren't they weren't gonna confront him. In fact, the best they could come up with is a question. Not a statement, not a command. 
not, don't do this. The best thing they come up with is a statement. Now, next morning, that was the early morning, he was returning to the city. He became hungry, and seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves alone. And he said to it, No longer shall there be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. This makes an impression on Matthew, so much that he includes it here. This fig tree that had any faith on it. Only leaves. And Jesus was hungry. So he curses it. And it's gone. Now the disciples ask him, Why in the world did you do this? Seeing this, the disciples were amazed and asked, How did the fig tree wither all at once? And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith, you do not doubt. You will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if I say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive it all. Why did he curse the fig tree? Even before that, though. He was mad at it, but he was hungry. Yeah. He wanted fish. Which I don't blame you. I kind of like fish. They're good to eat right off the tree. Yeah, and when I was growing up, the biggest tree we could have in kindergarten was Stig Newton's. I didn't know what a fig was in those days, but I liked the kids. Um, it was sad, I don't like figs, but it's not wrong with you. They were very delicacy. I don't want to. Yeah, that's yeah. a little bit wrong with you. Then. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a fake fig tree. It deserves. But Jesus was hungry. He was mad at it. Yeah. And folks, I felt the same way. Uh, I've got to get a chainsaw out. There's a red tip in my backyard that is all brown on top. And um, there's, there needs to be a expense made over Mary's house now because there's a huge big tree in her backyard leaning towards the house that's now dead. All the, all the uh, needles are brown. So it hadn't been that long, but it needs to come out. They started, they were talking about that the other day when I was over there. Uh, that would be Friday afternoon. Uh, you know, it's caps to happen. I've done it back here behind that, the church building here. There's trees that are dead that have to come down. You know, don't want them to come down in a hurricane. Um, they don't work. I mean, that's what you do with all plants, right? They don't work, you get rid of it. If it doesn't happen, you get rid of it. I mean, it, not only is it in Kentucky, we we didn't call them dead trees. What they call them widowmakers. Um, you see a dead tree in your house, you ask somebody to fix the widowmaker that you have in your yard. Because when that falls on you, you're going to be dead. How much do trees weigh? Tons. Yeah. That big old pine tree by the lot pole out here that I had removed? That thing weighed tons. And it got, it got removed because it could hit my house or the church building and it could have come down on either one in a hurricane. When Matthew was coming, that thing was swaying where almost the branches were touching around. Well, the base of it is at least two and a half foot. Yeah. Or more. Um, and I don't want to set fire to it because I'm afraid of what might burn underneath the ground, you know. And the hole it would make. <laughs> yeah, and the hole it would make. And also there's a light pole right next to it that may be it may be wrapped around. I, I, I don't want to I don't want to mess with it. Yeah, the light bulb gets burned real quick. And on the crystal. You know, every year I look around all these trees. Uh, ever since especially Matthew when that tree fell across my house. I got caught, luckily, by an oak tree, but uh, I don't want that to happen. Uh, but see, this is the thing. Uh, the tree has to work. 
are set to that. That works with every client, right? Uh, it's not as easy as you can. Folks, I would love to have grass out here. So I spent about 300 bucks. And now I've got to spend a little bit more to fix it because a piece of it came off. To get a grass catcher for my mower. Because I don't want, and it works. I don't want a lot of these grasses to keep growing. You know, I cut it down slow. I want that centipede grass to keep growing. I want the dandelion's gone. I want the other thing done. Folks, that's the only way I know to get rid of them. You can poison them, but you'll poison your grass too. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do. I've seen weed and feed, it don't work as well. The best thing is get a grass catcher for your motor, get rid of the way they have it reproducing, and they'll die. Weed and feed actually fertilizes the weed and its grass. It can. It I've does. Seen certain weeds, it does. Um, I did that to uh, Mother's Grave. It was, it was beautiful before they dug that hole, and then everything started going out of it. So I take the weed eater out there, and then after the weed eater, I rake it all up in a, uh, into a bag, everything I can get. And over the course of a couple of years, it's gotten a lot less weeds in it. it used to be all get all overgrown. You know, that's the only way I know to get rid of weeds. Um, but that's beside the point. In this case, sure he wasn't doing his job. Now, I've seen a lot of people who use this as how we should treat people. I don't think that's how we treat people. That's how you treat trees. Well, actually, Joe, in Mark, it tells you there was not yet time for the fig tree to be put on figs. Well, yeah, but he had one it there. It yeah, he, wanted, he wanted something to eat and the figs. And the emphasis here is not that the tree was bearing fruit or not bearing fruit. The emphasis is, how was it done? You know, how did Jesus do it? And he says you do it by faith. We got a little bit more to talk about that tonight, but in, in sermon tonight, but um, you, you can do it. Have, the, go ahead, Lord. That's okay. You go ahead. If you don't have faith, the Lord take care of you. There's something wrong with your head. Yeah. I don't care who you are. You got to have faith. That's a good thing. Ma'am. That's a good thing that. I, mean, I have been traveling over the country. 15 years old. I never went to school. I don't read and write. I'm not bragging. And anywhere I went, I could put in front of a place, the filling station, I said, Can I clean the yard or rake to pick up this trash or something? Joe, I'm not lying to you. Uh -huh. They will take care of you because I've asked him to. Uh -huh. And it does work. And I'm getting better. Not perfect. But I'm getting better about thanking God for all those things. Yes, sir. Quicker than, you know, I used to. Because those really aren't necessary. You, you do need to thank God for the things that He does for you. Hey. You need to thank God for protecting somebody sick. And you need to thank God for letting you find car keys when you go somewhere. You know, it's at book with here. But the emphasis here is not so much that the fig tree wasn't producing food. The emphasis here is how did how did Jesus make it wither or die? He was actually, I think, doing that to show them what faith does. I, I think that's probably the reason. Not so much that he was so mad at the fig tree. Because right afterwards he told them. You have the faith you can tell us not to get a cast yourself. And I don't think that it's a, a thing to um, correct people who are wrong, we should make them wither and die. You know. I think what it is is because Jesus never does this to a person. No, he you know, he, if the if, if people challenge him or something, he you know, he doesn't curse them to death immediately. You know, it, Okay. He could have look what here. He could have been. Yeah, he could have been. Like I said, yeah, they, I was going to that cross. I was thinking of the cross. I was going to that cross. I was going to that cross. I was going to that cross. We need 
Take your cup up. Or you want, you want some more? Somebody's got to do it. You need to wait till the prices go up before you haul it. Yeah. If you wait till the prices go up, now you should make it worth it. Yeah. Yeah. He said, well, more don't worry about it. You get more than one story. What time do I have? So, they did the lab motors. Somebody told me, you got that. I've hauled off motors before. Yeah. I've hauled off steel before. Well, every time I ever used to haul stuff off, I always got a couple of hundred. Oh, you did? I wait till the price goes up. You make sure we're not at all. You go haul it all out to a penny a pound. You ain't going to make it up. 70 cents a pound. Yeah, I don't know how much was steel. 70 cents. Okay, and I agree with you. I paid four dollars a day. I see Paul, but you spend more hauling to it than you're making money out. I'm guessing what you were saying. You didn't work for them all. I've been trying to have so much guidance. Someone's got to do it for our mistakes. Someone's got to do it for our mistakes. The right answer is wait till the price goes up, check the market, then haul. You said the pay on $20 piece. You know what the turkey is? It's on a computer. Oh, we got a job for a hat. Phone and tell you. But you know what a bag of tea is cost for you? No, I don't. $30 a bag. I just got to get the pot. I don't mess with you. $30 a bag. Chicken tea. Chicken tea. Crack corn. Tell you, maybe. You know what? Yeah. It ain't But it's up too. You know, yeah, everything. You know. You mark 174 for the rotation. Okay, 174. 174. Dark Cornish rooster. Dark Cornish rooster. Yeah. There's probably chickens. There's probably there's probably 300 different breeds. Yeah, there's chickens. There's probably chickens. There's probably chickens. There's probably chickens. There's yeah, I got a, I got a copper oh, no, house. Oh, Mr. Martin, that's right. Yeah, but you know, it's worse than a dog. 
Everybody doing that. All right, at least I have to do it. Sandy. She's been sick. I uh, uh, heard. I had to talk to her, Sandy. I know. I, I sent her a call. It may be her mother now. Huh? It may be her mom. That's not yeah. How's your mom doing after Mary? Yeah, okay. I thought about her. Yeah. Well, what else can you do? Yeah, what did he do? Where's Barry at? Did he work? No, he was working last night. Oh. Yeah. Worked last night. Yeah, but I'm 50, anything from 60 to 100. It's good. But it wasn't on the first one. Yeah, I read the report. She had how they normal has my chart. Yeah. And you can read their reports. Yeah. Back in 2017, they said I had moderate to mild to moderate blockage to my neck. Oh, you got crazy. They never told me. They never and that's been five years ago. My God. And I've been getting yeah, you need to have ultrasound. Oh, that, that might be why you crush yourself, too. Yeah, they don't tell me nothing when you're in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, quick to take years to build. I'm marking your book. Joe, it's hot enough outside already. You cook outside of that yeah. head in the stove. I know. Believe me, I know it's hot out there. Some people show up and get you off the news. Show up. You know, I can read the I can do it. 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 I yeah, I do open prayer. I do open prayer in the Lord, so. Not open prayer, but open prayer. Not the Lord, so. He ain't going to be doing that. Oh, okay. And he has Woodstock and Smithy. I said, well, God, he's got Woodstock and Smithy. He can't be all bad. You stand a bit down on the roof? Not really. No. They kind of run out of work for us. They go fuel, Joe. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. What does it mean if you're talking to the cost me $65 to fill my pickup. It costs me over $100 to fill my pickup. It costs me over $100 to fill my pickup. It costs me over $100 to fill my pickup. It costs me over $100 to fill my pickup. It costs me over $100 to fill my pickup. It costs me over $100 to fill my pickup. Oh, you're talking, you're talking about the work truck. I'm talking about my pickup. My pickup truck. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The big I just got one, no, two weeks ago I got a climber and kept it under the shed for two, two or three days and walked around and, beat, and I took it and burned it. I mean a good and the liquor, oh, one of one of them wouldn't work right. I got one we got two recliners in Brooklyn. I got new idea. I got the new by the uh, 29th. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just got insurance. 
Oh, you got a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got 17, 18 days. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm doing two weeks. All those kind of have a. Shoulder, shoulder. We went from Blue Cross to Alabama to Blue Cross Water. Mm. Probably the same thing. Yeah. 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 Different state. We'll find something. Okay. Saw a bunch of them. Yes. Okay. Or officers. Well, it was just getting in the wind yeah. and collecting dirt. I, I, was, I, was, I was scared of keeping in the shed. There was yeah, 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 Big old thing to do. You know, you can't. I ain't done watching you. Yeah. 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 You've got to hold up and bleed the cord. Like yeah. 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 we need to turn them over every now and then. I got bold. I got bad eyes. Yeah, but roll them all the way up. Oh, yeah. Because the sun, sun, you know, crimp it up and break it up. I learned that the hard way. Bad man. Yeah. Eric, 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 Limbs and things on burning. Oh, yeah. They just get to start it fast. Yeah, I don't burn no diesel fuel or gas. I can't afford that. It costs too much. They'll be a matter. But over there, go with you. When you go going home, the idea is cheap. They should buy gas on an overtime, which I had 16 years well, I ain't going way over there now. It would cost me money to get over there. Well, I don't know. You go down. It's only about 100 I got miles all short. You run 16 all the way down 995. You're at 99 mile mark. You're 14 miles. Rich people. South Carolina. You're 19 miles from the cook zone. Or from the gas station. 1920 miles. Yeah. 20 miles go there and get the gas station. 50 cents a pound. Well, it was uh, outside this morning. Uh, down under gas and higher than the Georgia gas. She took the time to put some pretty hard shit. I mean, I don't know. Very mouthy, very mouthy. And I overlooked it. I think it was. But anyway, she had a 14 cent difference. Short, she could have been four foot tall. She went to the men's bathroom to use the restroom. I mean, it's an average screen. She found out, and I said, Are you a man or a woman? She goes, I'm like, I, I, what'd she say? I can ask myself to be a man. I said, Well, I know what I had. Four? She's four foot tall. Oh, it was a female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Current average, four dollars, sixty cents. Yeah, that's diesel. Yeah, that's diesel. That's four. I can't stand it. Four six. A month ago it was four ten. Well, yeah. Yeah. Four four six. Four. Six. yeah. yeah. So, him, I'm teaching her to share. Big truck stop right over here. Just buy something. And I hold it for a second and I offer it back. On the diesel. Well, that's what that is. That's premium. That is. Is it Yeah. We play that game all the way. Premium is diesel here. Diesel is ridiculous. I had about the air. My son. He may not pay attention in school, but he has. Four sixty-five. I raised three forty-five. I gave you out here. You were zero. Which? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm still that way out. That's 
Here to Charles. My mom used to say she was going to kill one of us if he doesn't win the death. Look at that. I tell you, it's here you are. All right. Right there. And we believe her. Well, then you got to fight. I was 19 years old. 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 I was 19 and like, I tell my mom, she, she used to make us go outside. This kind of weather and hot, mm -hmm. and we would have to stay outside from morning to dusk. And she would give side. us the sandwich to the screen door and make us drink out the garden mm -hmm. And we would only go to the inside to go to the bathroom because she was cleaning, but mm -hmm. she was walking so far. She says, now, I didn't do that. I said, yes, she did. You open the crack of the door. That man just picking up that sandwich through. She's like, I didn't do that. I said, yes, you did. That's it, right there. She's like, I don't know. 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 She saw me in the uh, branch and you like didn't back up in that tree. She got back there. No, I can't see that guy. Yeah, she was across the street. Now you won't be able to see their sign. Uh, she beat she beat the markers. And she realized, why did he work? Why did he get up? Well, his legs are broken. Right. 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 I don't think the same children. Uh, I'm looking at the small way. Yeah. It gives them repercussions. She draws. You draw that. That's why I See? believe about people that break the law. We're going to go back here. We're going to break the law. Oh, yeah. So we got here. Obey. Spankins put the. You know why? Because they make so much money. I think what they'll do is they'll be put them on chains. Yeah. 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 Oh, I was thinking that was you. <laughs> no. 
Oh, you know, people laugh. The only thing you might have some seafood thing on the side of my truck would be a big old crab. Yeah, crab would be here. Wash your hands. They have the same kind of rice too. Just different. How you been feeling? We've been going a long time to see you. First of all, you're And when my father was in the 40s, back then, he had been in the 100 years. Gas and gas 
Where's my bag? Where's my bag? Who's over there? I'll leave the rest of the person. I don't know if good or battery in there. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Church of Christ here in Alabama, Georgia. Goes out in that department this morning services. Hope you prayer be by Brother Wade. I'll be your song leader. Communion by Brother Charles. Assisting you, Brother Kenny and Brother Mike. And dismissal service by Brother Joe. If you would, open your song books up number 568. 568 for our first song. O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Redeemed and good and blessed, 
Yonder in glory where the crown is won. For Jesus is now the star divine. Brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on. Oh, beautiful stars of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawns. Oh, give us our light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Before opening prayer, let's turn to see number 231. 231. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, I
pray for Kathy Pila with this time. She has a shoulder problem. Pray that she can get better and learn from the doctors that she can get healed. Bless everybody here. Bless the family. Bless the lady. On the full take of the Lord's Supper, let's turn to Saints Supper. 723. 723. Shall come, we shall. 
Again, please. And here, Father, we're thankful for the faith that we have to come back and take take us through the mind that represents our Savior's good blood. May each one go back in their mind where you went through. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus name that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Before giving our means, let's turn to thing number 101, 101. <coughs> Sing the first, second, and last verse, one, two, and four. Oh, to Jesus I surrender, oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence. 
No wood mark number 174 for invitation. 174 for invitation. And before our lesson, let's turn to see number 488. 488 before our lesson. 488. Remember that song? Four eighty. Put it on my face. Sing to me of heaven, sing a song of peace from the toes and find me it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so. Showers of faith, blessings o'er my heart will flow. Sing to me of heaven, let me find the dream of his golden glory, of his pearly gleam. Sing to me when 
shadows of the evening fall seem to be of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven as I walk along, dreaming of the comrades that are long has gone. In a fair region by the angels' song, they are happy as they sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly drink of his golden glory, of his pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the Sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low, till the shadows o'er me rise and swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when the day is long, Sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly drink of his golden glory, of his pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven, sweetest song of all. Good morning. Good morning. Parts of burden today, the passing of our sister Mary Bacon last Friday, two days ago. Her funeral is tomorrow at 2 30. If you have a call across the street, it's a great time service only. I encourage everyone to attend. Today, I want to talk about something that was important to her, as it was for the old one, and it was to each and every one here. Because you see, back in 1980, a group of Christians met who were going to Bull Street at the time, and they're traveling to Melville. There's only one of those people in attendance today, and that's Brother Charles. Brother Bob, who's passed away, came out here, who was an elder at the uh, Bull Street congregation, and is, he told me many times. He said, we met one Wednesday night, studied the Bible, and before we left, we established a church. So what does that mean? What does that mean? What is this local church membership involved? Well, unfortunately, many times it's this. Uh, the poor guy in front, the preacher, I'm sad to say I've been that preacher in the past. Not here, but in many places. You got to worry about what you say because you don't want to offend. Please refer to sin as bad choices. Make sure that there are enough programs for my kids. Tell me again how God wants to bless me. <clears throat> Only good news. And remember how much money I get each week. Been there. I've been what Ray Stevens called the first self righteous church. I've been there. It's not the way it works. Let's look at it. In talking about the local church, we first have to talk about what we did last week in the church universal. That's the totality. That's every Christian everywhere in the world. But God never intended for Christians to entirely serve Him independently. 
and in isolation from one another. I am so happy of the days that we live. I really am. Because your access to church attendance and to worship is so broad and so wide. We have had people come to our services from Europe, from Africa, and from all over these United States. Some people from as far away as Shakespeare have attended. Now we don't have as many that the pandemic's over, and many church services are back on locally now. We do have several by YouTube that attend. Right, but it's still not enough. It's still not enough to sit there. I used to hear this all the time. Well, I worship God at home. You should. You should worship God at home, but that in no way says anything about what we're supposed to do with our local congregation. God has provided with us a base of strength and a base of fellowship that's larger than than the individual Christian. And that is the local church. The local church. The local congregation. It is God inspired. It is given to us. You see, members of the Lord's body are members one of another. The people in this room right now, the people in this room right now, and those who are not able to be here, we are members of each other. You see, local churches are those brought together by a common faith and a determination to work as a team. It's a distinct entity. It is not a single saint. It is not simply a group of saints. A group of, or a plurality of saints. Because what has to happen in that plurality of saints is there has to be unity. In order for any local congregation to exist, it takes exercising the conduct and the will of members. Look at Ephesians 4 and verse 1. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another in love, being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That's quoted many times in what Christians all over the world are supposed to do, and necessarily so. But if you'll look at who it's written to, it's written to the congregation of the church, in Ephesus, a city. It's written to a local congregation. So what does that mean? If we're a member of a local congregation, we walk out humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit, the bond of peace. And so that brings up unity again. And people that want to destroy that says, say that, well, then you believe in unity at any cost. No, I don't. But I do believe in unity at a insurmountable, generous cost. The reason why is I have been to congregations where it does not exist. And I don't want to go there again. I've been to congregations, preached for them, they don't have unity. Do I believe in unity of any cost? No. I don't believe we should dismiss services to worship Satan. I don't believe we should dismiss services to watch the Super Bowl either. Two different things. Yet, I do believe in unity at a great cost. Not in sacrificing the scriptures, but you know, that rarely happens. <coughs> that rarely ever happens. Most of the times when unity doesn't exist, it has nothing to do with the Word of God. It has to do with silly little temporal things that we can easily live without. 
Case in point, I can remember a difference of opinion where everybody was wrong here. Um, this was many years ago. A few of us can remember the free carpet that came. It was green. It was patterned. And we did agree on the fact that nobody liked it. <clears throat> so what should we do? Well, we had to do a little, we had to work on some skills because I didn't know commercial carpet didn't have padding in it. It doesn't. It doesn't have padding underneath it. You're not supposed to. Commercial grade carpet is supposed to be laid right on the foundation as it is. In this case, uh, green cement. So we had three colors to pick. <clears throat> one was a blue, one was a, a red, and one was a lavender frost. I chose the blue one. I don't remember what it was called. Blue and red, they had different things, but I can always remember it was called, no, it was not lavender, it was burgundy frost. And then once it was laid, <clears throat> Everybody looked down and said, that's purple. <laughs> it is. You can, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> if you look down, you're going to see purple. I think it's pretty. <laughs> Blue would have been pretty. <laughs> um, but, needless to say, it don't matter. You still walk on it. And, you know, I have seen professionally done photographs of weddings done here. And you see purple <clears> everywhere. <throat> you know you're in, you know you're in yellow belt and you see purple. And for a while, our uh, seat cushions were kind of a, kind of a pinkish red. So our building looked a lot like an ad for Petro Bismol. <laughs> <laughs> but you got used to it after a while. You know, it just seemed like that's the way it be. It took me a while to get used to these. The thing is, it don't matter. You know, there's a lot of churches that would have split over stuff like that. There's a lot of congregations that would have gotten upset and had arguments over stuff like that. You know, we didn't have one argument. We didn't have one argument. You see, when we decide that we're going to join ourselves to the local congregation. We decide that we're going to be accepted and we're going to accept them. Paul had this problem. When in Jerusalem, they knew him as a persecutor of Christians, but Barnabas came down and told them what a wonderful guy he was. And once a particular group of Christians are formed, in a place as a local congregation. They work together as one. I and them and you and me, that they may be perfect in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me and you love them just as you love me. And when these people work together, they are agreed. The two people walk together unless they have agreed to meet. So what are we saying about the local congregation? We're saying that it's a group of people who are united. A group of people who know each other. A group of people who remember each other, who miss each other when absent, who look forward to being together. It's not a people. So you got to walk on eggshells around. You know, it's not a people where when you get together, you got to watch what you say. It's not a people when you get together, you got to watch what you do. It's not a people where uh, you have to consider the fact what would people think or what could people say. If there's a disagreement, there's a disagreement. It's all out in the open, but both we can be. We can disagree without being disagreeable. 
You can disagree without being hateful. And just because you think it's right, don't make it right. And just because you think it's, been, it's wrong, don't make it wrong. And please, when somebody asks you why you believe the way you do, don't say, because I've always felt that way about it. That's meaningless. Disagree without being disagreeable. Discuss without arguing. Be as one. <clears throat> now, if you're a member of that local congregation, the work, the healthy growth, and the unity and the purity and the reputation of this body of Christ is very important. Ephesians 4.16 from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. We're going to stay in Ephesians for a minute, but I want to look at this illustration. Folks, when I was younger, I had a doctor. Now, I have a medical dream team that I attend several different people. And the older you get, the more doctors you got. People say, well, I've only got one doctor. Well, if you're 60 years old, you need more than one. Because things go wrong. But something I've noticed is when stuff goes wrong with one part of the body, it goes wrong with the whole body. I can remember one night, it was stupid basketball announcer. Shaquille O'Neal, which he's now the most powerful force in advertising today, because he's on every commercial there is. But at one time, and I can remember when I was a student of basketball, he was the most powerful force in the NBA. <clears throat> he was sitting out one night because he had an injured toe. The sportscaster, I can't believe a man that makes millions of dollars a year to play basketball sitting out for an injured toe. That man was stupid. Because that toe, you can't play basketball without all ten of them. You will not be able to run. And you will not be able to jump. And both of those things are necessary in basketball. And even as tall and big as he is, he could never do this. You have to have them all to play basketball. One is not unimportant. And let's bring this down to us. How are we talking about this? Folks, each and every one of us who has ever hammered a nail and hammered several of them have from time to time hit a finger with a hammer. Right? Yeah. But what happens? I'm right-handed, so I would hit this finger, this thumb. Do we just look at that thumb? And say, you know, you should have got out of the way. That's your own fault. <laughs> we don't do it. Yo, praise the Lord. We don't do it. First of all, the mouth says something. <laughs> then it blows on it. Like that's not gonna help, but it does, right? That's not a, that's not gonna help. And then the whole hand shakes it. Okay? Then the other hand throws the hammer across the yard because everybody knows it's the hammer's fault. But it happened. We scream for our wives. We use our feet and run inside to hold it under water, which may help a little bit. Bandage it. And we use our ears to hear words of comfort from loved ones. And to feel better about the mistake that we have stupidly made. This is what he's discussing. When one part of the body is feeling great, then we all feel great. When one part of the body is hurting, we all hurt. It affects every <clears throat> one of us. I can remember an old youth group thing that we used to do. We used to take a ball of yarn or a ball of twine. 
And what you would do is you would hold the end of it and you would pick somebody in the group and you would say something nice to them. You would say something you appreciate about them and you would throw that to them. And that person would hold that part and they would say something nice about somebody else and throw it. And after about 20 or 30 throws, you had a big mess of yarn in the middle. And the guy that was leading the group when it was done to me, he said, I want to show you something. Everybody hang on to your piece. He said, if you take and you pull one string of this twine, it moves every other one. If you leave it alone, the rest of them know it's being left alone. But you can't fill any part or no one can pull their piece without it being known everywhere. That's how a spider catches its prey. Is because no matter where its prey touches that web, it knows it. Same way as the church. We work together. How do we work? Being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That he might, in verse 27 of Ephesians 5, that he might present to him the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. We work together to make sure that the impression that the church has is great. Oh, you said not to worry about what people would think. Doesn't matter what people think. Because if we do what the Bible tells us to do, People are going to think wonderful things about us. Can you imagine what people would say? Instead of, oh, y'all of that group don't use the piano. Y'all of that group don't believe in Christmas. Y'all of that group don't believe in Easter. Whatever it is. Can you imagine what would happen if people said about us, that's that group that works together so well because they love each other. Look, I don't care. I don't care what else is going on. If I hear of a group like that, I want to be a part of it. Amen. Those are a group of people that when one person speaks, everybody listens. Those are people that one hurts, everybody cares. If you do what the Bible says to do, your reputation is great. We will appear as lights in the world. We will appear as lights in the world. So that you will prove yourself to be blameless and innocent children of God, above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. You see, failure to properly understand that individuals in the local church, we've entered into this promise, covenant relationship. And that we are members one of another with duties and responsibilities to meet both for the church and for each other, which is basically, you understand, the same thing. <clears> that has been the cause of needless problems in this brotherhood of When we decide, when we decide that we are more than you, Not long ago, I heard someone critical of what was going on in the United States. And it says, we are the land of the free, but some people are a little bit more free than others. I'm sorry to say they may have had a point at that time. However, I'm a little bit more of a Christian than you. I need to be heard a little bit more than you. There's no place for that. There's no place for that. Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. You know why I wrote that Ephesians 3? It's because there were people that did not believe in that. So, what's my point? I'm going to read this. I know you can too, but let each of one of us who have mutually agreed to work and worship together take seriously our covenant and meet our obligations to the local church. If you had to draw how you felt about our congregation, is this what you would draw? 
Does this describe us? You know where I got this, I think. This is a cartoon of how the U.S. Senate is working right now. Which is probably not what it should be. Yeah. But would this describe our congregation? And just because they do it in Washington doesn't make it good. Does this describe us as a congregation? <clears throat> Folks, I love this game. I loved it. We, we would do it at school years ago when I taught middle school, and those kids absolutely adored playing tug of war. Everybody likes it. Or is this us? guy that's standing on the other side of the rope is Satan. Is this us? If it's not, it better be. And I can say that in any congregation of the Lord's church today, if this is not us, if this is not the way our congregation moves, if this is not the way it works, it needs to be. And this is what we want. Everyone working together for the good of each other, for the good of the gospel, for the good of the cause of Christ, both in this area and all over the world. We need to work together. Now, what would people think? I don't care. I couldn't care less. If you want to do something, the answer is yes. You're in charge of it. <laughs> do it. Take care of it. If you want to have something here at the building, the answer is yes. Invite everybody. Cook something. Eat something. Read something. Put puzzles together. I don't care. What would people think? We would think here's a group of people who love each other. And if they think anything else, they stupid. I don't care what stupid people think. And I don't want to be around them, you know? Football coach told me one time when he wouldn't go out to a huddle. I said, Coach, they called timeout. You went out to the huddle? The other team called timeout. said, You went out to the huddle? He said, No, I ain't going out there. They stupid. It might be catching. If, you, if, if you're just trying to find fault with the local church, then go away. If you're trying to make things better, if you're trying to make things closer, if you're trying, folks, whoever, you, you might have an idea that's stupid. We'll do it anyway. You know why? Because it might not be stupid. It might work. We've done a lot of things here that I thought was dumb to begin with. But we've done them and they weren't. In fact, we've done them and they weren't. But Either way, it work. What do you want me to do? Don't care. <clears throat> if it comes out of love, if it comes out of fellowship, if it comes out of your desire to fill the law of Christ, ain't wrong. Well, I don't want to offend anybody. Well, if it's a good work and you offend somebody, then you can be offended. <clears throat> Well, are they going to come and talk to you? Probably not. People stopped coming and complaining to me a long time ago because they don't like what I have to say about it. Get together. Be in unity. Don't worry about the outside. Do God's work. Strengthen your local congregation. Strengthen. Make things better where you're at. I don't care if you make things better in a square foot or a square mile. Just make it better. For any reason, you stand in need. Respond to the Lord's invitation. Will you come? Let's see how we stand. That's what I'm Careless soul.
Why will you linger, wandering from the fold of God? Hey, you not the invitation. Oh, pretend to meet my God, careless souls. Oh, heed the warning. For your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment. Unprepared to meet thy God. Why so thoughtless are you standing while the fleeting is spent in folly. Oh, prepare to meet thy God, careless souls. Oh, it's the morning, for your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment, unprepared to meet thy God. Hear you not the earnest pleading of your friends that wish thou well, and perhaps before tomorrow, you'll be called to meet your God, careless souls. Oh, heed the warning, for your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad. To face a judgment, unprepared to meet thy God. If you spurn the invitation, till the Spirit shall depart, then you'll see your sad condition. Unprepared to meet my God, careless souls, oh, heed the warning, for your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment. I prepare to meet thy God. Let us pray. The Lord, the most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, beautiful day that you've given us to worship you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for so many good things you've done for us in the past. Also for the good things that we know you'll do for us in the future. We ask a special blessing upon the ones who are sad. Sister Mary's family. Be with them and strengthen them and help us through this period of sorrow. Be with us now as we leave this place. Help us to take you with us wherever we go, dear Heavenly Father. And always thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us. And us through your son we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, as was very about announced before, Mary's funeral is 2.30 across the street.
Uh, that's a home big rates that service, no chapel service, no services here. They don't, um, people have already brought food, but we're not going to do anything here after the services. I offered and they said no. Uh, so I think in lieu of flowers, they want donations made to uh, coastal technicians. I had a question. Um, I was going to get a artificial silk to put at the cemetery. That's up to y'all. If you think we're up to just donate money to the rescue or get a thing for the cemetery. I think probably about to both. Because I can get a nice silk arrangement that they can leave there. I think probably about to both. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Are we going to take that out of the church treasury? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Paul and I, we ate breakfast at the Pancake House, and uh, we used to go to the parkway, and um, there were some complications there, so um, that's when we came out here. And one of the guys that he eats at the door was there, too, with his church family. Uh -huh. And... Uh, he asked me if I was going to church, to the church next door to our house. I uh -huh. said, no. He goes, where you go? I said, Delabelle. He goes, was it that far to go? And I said, I'll drive 100 miles if I have to go to Delabelle. Amen. <laughs> I did. I mean, he just looked at me funny. And I said, that's our family out there. Amen. I'm glad you feel that way. I'm glad a lot of people uh, how many people going to pick on you and get her standing up on? I don't care. <laughs> you can't count me anyway, so I'm not sure. You know that, right? <laughs> I can handle that. Hi, guys. Yeah. My sister was here last week. She said hi to everyone. Oh, that's nice. It's okay. nice to have her. It was. She, okay. said, she said she's, well, she's trying to get a house, and she asked me to ask y'all if you say a prayer that she would be able to get it. It looks like she's going to get it. It's like a block and a half from my parents. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah it would be, well, you know, she's really not my sister. She's still part of the family. Yeah, but she, she was my sister in law. <laughs> she was married to my brother. And I know her since I was seven. My dad started preaching at the church where she went, and we just, I mean, became instant friends. And she's been my sister. That's what we call each other. That's what we've always called each other. So she's my sister. <laughs> There's a lot to be said for not being so specifically correct. That's yeah. what I call Donna. She's my sister. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Y'all were my brothers and sisters. That's how I feel about y'all. Seriously, I need to get back again, Uncle. Don't come again. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a long time. <laughs> you can have mine if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you be any more good than Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Donna's having a difficult thing. Yeah, she, she, she's holding out long as she can. She has a really bad kidney infection. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she passed a stone Ooh. yesterday. Uh, so she's in a lot of pain. Uh, they're trying, even her doctors are saying this, try to stay out of the hospital. Because she does not need to get the diseases that they're in a the hospital. And with her immunosuppressive you know, stuff that she has. That was a lot of problems with Mary. She yeah. Family and all stuff. Yeah, that was odd about Mary. She passed away uh, Friday, that early afternoon. Kevin and I went over to talk to her Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, she was. She knew who I was. She asked her. about Aaron. She asked about Joy. She asked about my dogs. She was <laughs> just Mary. You know? Yeah. Uh, but they said she kind of been delirious for a few days before they brought her home. But she, they got two special days with her at home. How's that? Uh, three. Mm -hmm. How's that? She's in a nursing home. I don't really know. I'm not sure which one. I've heard well, Richmond Hill, there. but uh, I don't know. We'll probably need to talk about it. How long has she been there? Oh, good well, long. Well, Mary hasn't been able to take care of her in a long time. You know, she's been, this was her 12th hospitalization, I won't say this year, uh, we're only June. So, I have seen the ambulance over there quite often. 
Wednesday, I thought they were just having a big family get together. Mary's, Mary's, Mary's birthday was not that far, and then I saw the uh, well, it was an ambulance. It was one of those transport trucks, you know, for people. Like, they brought her home. Uh, so I thought well, something wrong, bad wrong. That's when I walked over there before the service And it was, and it is. Um, being in prayer for me. Uh, every time I sit down, my pulse drops like in the 50s, and I have called it at 37. And they tell me I had a urinary tract infection. I never had one, never felt anything. He said it's pretty significant. So she went to the she went to the emergency room for uh, that pulse problem that she has, but I show urinary tract infection. And Aaron went at the same time with 105 fever. Yeah. My son's been having a fever. Every time the sun goes down, his fever skyrockets. He's had two shots, took a Z-pack, and he's still in the there. And they told him yesterday that he was dehydrated. Well, that will. People will do that. But they Not said he's find problem. out why. Fever will dehydrate you. Not his problem. I don't think so. I, I had not talked to him today to see what's going on. We watched him for yesterday. <laughs> Well, that I can't think wrong body slammer, so she's happy. Yes, ma'am. Jana's doing great. And yeah. Tomorrow will be her first month birthday. Oh. <laughs> her what? First she month? She'll be one month old. Oh. Yes. Well, she's not old enough to be a body slammer. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bella. Happy birthday to you. You know that name. Is she oh. hear it. She's moving. Uh, <laughs> that name, it almost seems to have, to have to have Lady in front of it. Lady Isabella. Lady Isabella. Yeah. <laughs> it's derogatory from um, Hebrew. Yeah. And uh, withdraw it or. Uh, I looked that up. I don't know. Um, I can look it up. But Isabella, our queen, Isabella, yeah. Yeah, was responsible for sending Columbus here. Yeah. <laughs> Sold some of her jewels, sent Columbus here. That's why we're here. I love the name. What's her name? Mabel. Mabel. Yeah, maybe yeah. yeah. That's his grandmother's name. Oh, okay. Isabella. I, I know her. She passed her when she was 96 old. Yes. Wow. wow. And then I knew her for four years, so she was very kind and very sweet lady. Oh, no. Yes, sir. This is over. Y'all woke her up. She's saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This afternoon at 5, we are meeting again. Hope we'll be here. No. This is on the place of two Father's Day next Sunday. What uh, Sunday happened? We can't eat. Uh, 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 we will.